now at dreamsresorts.com with savings of up to 40%. I feel like it's a breath of fresh air. Tomorrow on ET, inside the complex mind of Kanye West. Are you worried as his friend? What his new documentary directors want you to know. Plus, Milo Ventimiglia's Mrs. Maisel role reveal. We're with the cast. You know, it's very, very physical. There's a lot of acrobatics. <laughs> Y'all know how much I love this show. I can't wait for it to come back. But before we go, congratulations yes. to Trevor Noah. He will headline the White House Correspondents' Dinner on April 30th. It is going to be a busy month oh, for yeah. Trevor because he's also hosting the Grammys on CBS April 3rd. Happening now. The credit union warning its customers today about a spike in a certain kind of phishing attempt seemingly targeted at local customers. What you need to know and how to avoid it. The halt on imports of avocados from Mexico continues. Coming up, how it's impacting businesses and your homemade guacamole. Humidity is on the rise. We'll talk about what that means for the morning commute and rain chances, not just here, but all across the state. The News at 5 starts right now. At first at five, we begin with breaking news from the far north side of the city. So we're hearing reports of a construction accident near I-10 and Ralph Fair Road. Now that's just south of Bernie. It's unclear exactly what happened here, but we are hearing reports that someone died. And right there, you can see a piece of machinery that's been overturned. Yeah, we're working to get more information. We'll have an update in our later newscasts and, of course, on KSAT.com. Now new at five, a man who led police on a vehicle chase around the city is now in handcuffs. This is after he crashed into a fire hydrant at South Laredo and Loma Vista. That's on the west side. State troopers are telling us that one trooper tried to make a stop at South Presa and Hot Wells, but the suspect took off. And that's when SAPD's helicopter got involved and then followed that suspect to the area where he crashed. The trooper began to uh, try to cat get the driver to stop. And uh, the suspect uh, wrecked out right here, striking a fire hydrant, and he was taken into custody. We'll be charged with evading, uh, felony evading, and for possession of a, a stolen vehicle, which is a unlawfully, unlawful use of vehicle. Now, thankfully here, nobody was hurt. A local credit union warning of a big uptick in a certain type of scam. Thieves getting to you by texting or calling you and then stealing your money. Garrett Berger explains what's happening and also how to avoid this. In a digital world, phishing attempts and scams are constant. But Randolph Brooks Federal Credit Union says they've seen one texting and phone call scam explode since the beginning of the month. We've had thousands of members that have been affected, which is probably, you know, 10, 20, 30 times more than, than typical in the last couple of weeks. So how does it work? Well, the scammer texts you pretending to be the credit union, warning you about a made up suspicious purchase. If you respond, they call you with a spoofed number to gain your trust. The scammer may have the victim's username already or try to get it out of them on the call or other information they need. While you're on the phone with them, they may try to reset your password or log in, prompting the actual credit union to send you a one-time passcode for security, which the scammer will ask you for over the phone. Once they have it, they're in. We've seen almost a million dollars and attempted fraud in just in the last two weeks. RBFCU thinks some kind of breach from outside the credit union and a type of cyber attack called credential stuffing could be behind the recent spike in scam attempts on their customers, specifically local customers. They all have 210 uh, area codes for the most part from, from what I've seen. But since the RBFCU says it might text or call its customers to warn about possible fraud, how do you know if it's them or a scammer? Well, they say they're never going to call you and ask for your personal information. And if you're suspicious on a call like this, whether it's with them or a different financial institution, just hang up, look up the number yourself and call them directly. That way, you know whom you're talking to. I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. We have learned the name of a 25 year old man who was shot and killed while driving Sunday morning. He is Arturo Pozos. San Antonio police say they are looking for his killer. They say Posos crashed into a Chili's parking lot along a loop 410 near Evers Road after he was shot. Two people who said they heard the gunshots and saw him crash told officers they tried to help Posos, but he died at the scene. We now know more about the 91 year old woman who was killed in a house fire last week. She's Jewel Jackson Dotson. The San Antonio firefighters tell us her home on Utah Street caught fire last Thursday after a space heater tipped over. They say a man who also lived there managed to escape, but he did suffer burns. 
And this next man that we're about to show you is wanted by police. He's accused of taking pictures up women's skirts at an HEB in New Braunfels. So we're about to show you his picture, and there it is. That picture was taken at the HEB Plus on FM 306 back on January 4th. Police in New Braunfels say that they saw that man on surveillance taking upskirt photos with his cell phone. So if you recognize him, call Crime Stoppers. In fact, it's paying up to $4,000 for his arrest. The number to call is 830-620-TIPS. In other news, the ex-president of Honduras has been arrested, putting the U.S. one step closer to meeting a request for extradition to the U.S. Juan Orlando Hernandez is wanted back in the U.S. on drug trafficking and weapons charges. He's accused of trafficking 500,000 kilograms of cocaine into the U.S. since 2004. He was arrested today less than three weeks after he left office. It's an emergency situation over at Animal Care Services. They need help. They're in great need of fosters after they took 50 dogs, 5050 dogs from a local home this morning. In a Facebook post, ACS says the dogs were living in a small house without their primary caregiver who recently passed away. They say other relatives tried to step up, but the cost was just too great. Now they need to find these dogs a new home. If you'd like to help out, you can apply at SAACS, SAACS info slash foster. You'll be contacted by someone with ACS about the next steps to take. Now in COVID-19 news today, Metro Health reporting just over a thousand new COVID cases. We know four more people have died of the virus and the seven day average is about 667. There are 638 COVID patients in the hospital today. 173 are on ventilators, 99 are in the ICU. So as the Omicron surge continues to dwindle down, a lot of states are easing up on those mask mandates. California, actually the latest state to make that change. Yeah, they've dropped indoor mask requirements for vaccinated people in California. But when it comes to schools, the state is not letting up. Once again, putting some parents on edge. They're continuing to keep our children's spaces covered uh, while adults, uh, politicians, celebrities all enjoy the Super Bowl game. Safety is always paramount for a situation where it's really not clear how many children and which children are necessarily going to be immunized. All right, so here's something else. Virus-related ER visits are down 75% this last month. New COVID cases are down 80%. That's a big number since Omicron peaked in January, but 98% of U.S. counties are still reporting high transmission, and that's exactly why doctors are saying that wearing your mask is still the best option. You can't say you matter unless you go out and vote. With early voting in full effect, the Black Votes Matters bus has rolled into San Antonio. The bus is here to promote the importance of voting ahead of a critical election. The National Voting Organization plans to visit more than 20 colleges and universities in Texas. And the mission here is to bring voters together and, of course, encourage young people to get out and vote. The bus is symbolic because it reminds us of the freedom riders that rode. It reminds us of the people that fought, the people that have died for these very rights that, that are being infringed upon today. So in an effort to get more people to speak up, the bus is going to make its way to Austin next. Check out traffic right now. This is I-35 at Randolph, and you can see I believe that's where 410 comes together there, and you can see it is very busy. I believe that may be the southbound lanes of I-35 that you're looking at. Northbound moving along pretty smoothly right now. Nothing but sunshine out there as well. Currently hardly even a cloud in the sky. 41 degrees this morning for the low temperature. That's four degrees below average. Then we topped out at 75 this afternoon. The average high being 68. 75 right now in Eagle Pass and Panamaria. Maria. 74 in Seguin. For the most part, we've got readings in the low to mid 70s. Even Windcrest now at 74. Now this evening, comfortable. Temperatures just slowly falling through the 60s. By 8 o'clock mid 60s, 10 o'clock 62 degrees. And then we should settle in the upper 50s by tomorrow morning, but added humidity could mean some issues for the morning commute tomorrow. We're going to talk about that. The next system that could bring us some rain and much more in just a bit. Thanks, Adam. You know, there's near perfect weather today in San Antonio. One year ago, though, it was hard to find warmth. Yeah, just think about this. San Antonio's low exactly a year ago today was only nine degrees. Nine. Yeah. 
Yeah, and while the winter storm started fun, yeah, it did end in darkness. You will remember that millions of us were struggling to stay warm. Yeah, thousands of homes had broken pipes, power outages across the city. This year, things clearly very different, and San Antonians are taking full advantage. Look at this weather. It's a beautiful day. It's a whole different yeah, story. Days like this is why we live in South Texas. That's right. And while today was a different one thing stays the same warm or cold on February 15th. This is an anniversary we will not forget. Mm. Now an historic settlement between a gunmaker and families of a school shooting in America more than seven years after the families of the victims of the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting filed a lawsuit. It is finally settled. Daryl Forges has the story. Today is a day of accountability for an industry that has thus far enjoyed operating with immunity and impunity. Gunmaker Remington has agreed to the settlement with the families of five children and four adults killed in the massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Every single day we miss who Rachel would be. The settlement comes more than seven years after the lawsuit was officially filed. Remington manufactured the Bushmaster AR-15 style rifle used in the 2012 attack that left 20 children and six adults dead in Newtown, Connecticut. It's not a useful weapon for hunting or for self-defense. It was designed to kill quickly and efficiently. With Remington now in bankruptcy, families will split the $73 million settlement. Plaintiff's attorneys say that is all the available coverage that Remington's four insurance carriers could pay. The other key part of the deal, the families have gained access to thousands of pages of internal company documents and their attorneys say they have the right to make them public. But you are going to get lawyers for the families claim Remington knowingly and negligently marketed military grade weapons to unstable individuals. These families, would, they would pay everything. They give it all back just for one minute. That would be true justice. I'm Daryl Forge supporting. Coming up, they're green, delicious, and go with pretty much anything. We are talking avocados. Yum, yum, but like most foods, they've gotten more expensive. But a new ban on the ones that we source from Mexico is really shaking things up, not in a good way. We're going to tell you why and whether it's going to impact your wallet. It's after the break. I'm Myra Arthur coming to you from the KSAT 12 newsroom. There was a lot we are working on right here for the news at six this evening, including more issues for a neighborhood bar. We're talking about the Twin Sisters Cantina on South Hackberry. It's a place that's troubled a lot of people in that neighborhood for a long time. And after several complaints, several incidents there, the bar is now permanently shut down and being demolished. Our Alicia Barrera visits that neighborhood to talk to people about this outcome. Plus, the topic of race in the classroom gotten a lot of attention lately. A new law called SB3 could affect how educators discuss racism with their students. Some are even calling this the classroom censorship bill. Our Jesse DeGoyato breaks down the challenge the teachers might face with this and how that could impact your students. And have you ever heard of the COVID-19 vaccine called Comirnaty? There's some confusion about whether that is any different than the Pfizer COVID vaccine. We're going to clear that up and we'll tell you what you need to know tonight on the News at 6. We'll see you then. All right, Myra, thank you. Now switching gears now, if you think avocado toast is expensive now, just hold up because the ban on Mexico's avocado imports continues. Yeah, the U.S. suspended shipments after an inspector was threatened. Mexico's president calls it politics. Either way, you, businesses, and other consumers could feel the impact if that ban continues. Pete's Taco House, may I help you? At Pete's Taco House, avocados are on the menu a lot. Tacos, chalupas, and don't forget the guac. Can you serve your menu without, without avocados? <laughs> Not necessarily, no, because that's like a staple for Tex-Mex food. Everybody loves their avocados. But now they're served up with a side of concern. Now that the U.S. has halted the imports of Mexico's green gold, Pete Rios knows when supplies are down, prices go up. And he buys about a case a day. So the impact's going to be quick as soon as the prices start going up. It may not take long. Here at River City Produce, they bring in avocados by the truckload. This box, they paid about $50. Now they're getting quotes for avocados, a box for 80 bucks. 
A price Nando Gonzalez says he isn't going to pay yet. He's hopeful the import issue will be resolved soon. Meantime, his warehouse is stocked. There's still plenty of supply in the, in the local supply chain. Okay. You know, the retailers have plenty of, uh, of avocados. Wholesalers still have plenty of avocados. As for HEB, the grocer tells us they're staying in close contact with their suppliers and currently don't foresee any disruption to supply. We'll see you in 15 minutes. Thank you. For Pete Rios, his supplier is scoping California's crops. He's hoping not to have to raise his prices. But after the last two years, the avocado snag is just the latest economic whammy. For now, guacamole's on the menu. Absolutely. Good. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, I was thinking businesses are like, really, something else? I know, yeah. that's just what we needed. All right, 73 degrees out there. It's beautiful. Beautiful day. But, you know, you see February 15th, you're like, remember, remember. last year. Can't yes. Forget. Always. And we're trying to put it behind us still, right? That was when it was all fun and games this time last year. Hey, let's enjoy the snow, have a good time. And then it turned into the civil engineering disaster. 70s the next couple of days. That may bring you some comfort. Bit breezy, though. You'll notice that southerly wind. However, a cold front's going to hit late on Thursday, and that's going to bring us back down right near freezing by Friday morning. At that point, we'll have temperatures right around the freezing point again. But take a look outside. Sunny, 74 degrees. Now, the dew point is at 45. And I want to point out the dew point because remember, that's the true measure of the amount of moisture in the air. The dew point because the temperature of the air needs to be cooled in order to be saturated. That's when you get gets dewy outside and that'd be at 45. But I do want to point out that we've got some higher dew points along the coast and that higher moisture content is going to move in overnight tonight and we'll have dew points in the 50s tomorrow. And I do think that's going to lead to some morning fog. Yes, yeah, some dampness, fog and drizzle to start the day tomorrow. But then by Thursday and even on through the weekend, that humidity is completely swept away. Early next week, it looks like we'll have a little hint of humidity back in the air. It's that time of year. We're starting to get that southerly breeze and give us little bouts of mugginess and humidity periodically. And one's going to be uh, later on tonight and throughout the day tomorrow. Temperature wise. 70s with some upper 60s. Rock Springs 68, Fredericksburg 69, New Braunfels though at 74. Catula the warm spot right now at 80 degrees, but by and large we're in the 70s. Bernie an even 70, Converse 74, and Divine right now at 75. 70s next couple of days. We talked about that mid, maybe even upper 70s. I do think there will be some 80s on the board the next couple of days, Thursday and Friday or Wednesday and Thursday. But then by Friday that cold front hits, morning temperature near freezing. And most of the afternoon will be spent in the 50s on Friday, but that's going to be a brief little cool down as we quickly rebound, just like from our last cold front over the weekend. Temperatures quickly rebounded. We're going to do that again with this next cold front. It's not going to stay cooler for a very long time. So here's the next system. It's actually an upper level disturbance right now in Southern California, at least giving them some areas of rain. This is going to drop southward into northern Mexico, but not far enough south to give us very good rain chances. I think we'll wake up to fog, drizzle and a few sprinkles, maybe a few hundredths of an inch. That's it. But you'll see here the bulk of the moisture with this next system stays far to the north of us, particularly Oklahoma. They're going to get the bulk of the moisture a little bit in the panhandle of Texas and then on the cool side side of it, they could actually have some snow in Oklahoma on the back side of it. But I'm showing you this big picture just to just to indicate that, yes, there's going to be moisture with it. It's just mostly going to be out of our area. We could see a quick hit or miss shower tomorrow night while we're sleeping, but the bulk of it's going to be to the north of us. That's actually where they could have some severe weather too, particularly up in Oklahoma. Rain chances for us at 20%, and some of that's just a sprinkle activity for tomorrow. Then early next week, Monday, we get back into another 20% chance. That's something we'll keep an eye on, and we can cross our fingers, but I'm not getting my hopes too high yet for that either. So 58 in the morning, a warmer morning tomorrow we will be in the upper 50s, dampness, fog, drizzle, reduce visibility for the morning commute. And then by the afternoon, we'll squeeze in some sunshine well into the 70s, even 80 degrees in a, in a few spots, warm, a little bit breezy, breezy again Thursday, well into the 70s. And there's that drop down Friday and Saturday morning will be in the lower 30s for temperatures. It's like still it. pleasant, though. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Adam. Still loving it. All right. Let's talk about the numbers for the Super Bowl. What do you think ratings wise? How many people do you think watched the Super Bowl this year? I think it was good. I think probably the ratings were good. What do you think? 
How many million? 40 million. Okay, that's a good guess. Very low, by the way, but that's a good guess. Okay, oh, all right. Yeah, wow. very low. All right, when we come back, more to come as DeRozan was unstoppable last night against the Spurs. And guess who gets the call to the hall when we come back? San Antonio Spurs win streak and already a road trip and it two straight after the Bulls were able to get their revenge on the Spurs last night in Chicago. That despite the fact the Spurs were able to get off to a great start. DeJounte Murray was on fire to begin with, driving baseline with a lane in the early lead. Later in the corner, Lonnie Walker the fourth hits his second straight jump shot, but the Spurs trail after the first quarter, 29-27. Now in the second quarter, Lonnie comes up with a steal, finishes with a two-handed slam, and the Spurs are back on top. But the Bulls return the favor. Keldon Johnson loses the handle. Javante Green gets it ahead to former Spur DeMar. Marta Rosen, who finishes with a dunk of his own, and the Bulls lead at the half, 59-57. Now in the third quarter, Doug McDermott hits the three in the finish with 19 points, and we are tied at 60. Kata bates Diop forces a turnover and finds Lonnie racing to the basket for the slam. Walker would finish with a team-high 21 points in the lead, heading into the fourth quarter, 89-83. That's where the Bulls slam the door. DeRozan was just too good last night. Heaven, he's returned to San Antonio, spoiled by the Spurs last month. He would finish with 40 points in the win, 120-109. Pop said after the game, it was the Spurs' inability to stop or at least slow down DeRozan that cost him the game. Dude's averaging, what, like 38 points past six games. He's playing remarkable. Um, but, I mean, we played with him last year. That's that's what he does, you know. He gets to his spots. If you're not blocking it, it's nine times, ten times out of ten, it's going to go in. So he's a terrific player. He's an all-star. He's a superstar, you name it. Um, I think down the stretch we just had a few turnovers, you know, ball wasn't going in the hoop. Um, but this is just all, you know, a learning experience that we got to take in, watch film, and grow from it. All right, congratulations, first assistant coach and head coach of the Las Vegas Aces, Becky Ammon, on being selected the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, Class of 2022. The announcement was made last night that included Hammond, who's a six-time WNBA All-Star, who played for the San Antonio Stars, which now the Aces from 2007-2014, before becoming the first full-time female assistant coach in the history of the NBA. The induction ceremonies will take place on June the 11th in Knoxville, Tennessee. And the Spurs have waived guard Goran Dragic after the Spurs' former second-round draft pick agreed to a contract buyout. It was part of that trade with the Toronto Raptors and included the Spurs receiving a protected first-round draft pick. Next up for the Spurs in the rodeo road trip tomorrow against Oklahoma City. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. And the Super Bowl ratings are in and more than 100 million people watched the Rams beat the Bengals 23-20 on over-the-air television. That's up from 92 million last year. And if you take into account streaming devices, it's more than 112 million folks. That's a lot of eyes on one event. And now you know why they, what, charge $7 million for 30-second commercial? Yeah, there you yeah. go. That's why. All big games should be on over-the-air television. I agree with you, Greg. <laughs> I rarely disagree with Greg. <laughs> we'll be right back. It's been a pleasure having you with us. We'll see you back here at 6. World News is next.